All right, hey folks, it's uh, Dr. Jamie Meyer. Uh, I'm in Colorado today uh, at PFI Speed, and these guys have been in the news a lot in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we've been talking about the RPM Act for several years now. We've been concerned about EPA overreach and really negatively impacting our racing community, uh, and PFI is the latest victim. Uh, they've got a big fine. Uh, it's impacted the small speed shop that's like so many others around the country. Uh, and today we're going to sit down with the owner, Brent. We're going to go through the story, learn a little bit about him, uh, and discover what the EPA is doing to him uh, and what you can do to help, which simply put is we've got to pass the RPM Act to protect the racing industry. So stay tuned. We've got a story to tell you. Thank you for letting yeah. us come out and see you. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a pleasure to meet you in person. Thank you. It's great to meet you too, honestly. We're, uh, we're just here trying to help the industry. So you're, you're the focus of it right now. So thank you. you know, yeah. Thanks again. Great to, great to meet uh, your family and some of your customers. And yeah, they're great. Get a walk through the shop a little bit. So yeah, you've been doing this a while. Yeah, I, this, is, this is my life. This is what I do. Tell me, tell me who you are and what you do. I'm Brent Livestead from PFI Speed. Um, I, started, I started PFI as uh, uh, Part Finders International, which we bought and sold, used Honda and Acura parts. Um, we've grown into a performance shop where now we have a 7,600 square foot building, with 11 bays, uh, six employees, um, servicing five um, serious clients a year being having cars ready for a race all the time is is a lot of work so we're always prepping the cars besides our own race cars and then having the youtube channel and having all the the videos and selling merch with that side of stuff as well so that's pretty much what pfi is and what we do um huge passion for this and doing this with our family and friends and it's all a big part of it so you've you got a good business going. You got family involved. Do you want to talk about the family involvement? Yeah. Um, so my son Shane works for me. Um, my daughter will help on the weekends and do shows with us. And it's, I mean, it's, it's incredible work with my kids. It's pretty awesome. Watching uh, my son grow and get so involved, you know, there's a lot of math, a lot of geometry in all of this, and he's picking it all up. Um, and it's, it's just really neat to see him take the reins. You know, I don't have to chase him around. He, he knows his jobs. He gets his jobs done. Um, he's real thorough. And uh, it's been really awesome to be able to work with him. I mean, I think racing has made him a, a better man altogether. Um, he's, he's gained a lot of friends, a lot of knowledge. And I believe, you know, he's going to take it way further than I ever could have. You know, I... I I think I've helped the industry a lot with, um, with coming up with some solutions to problems. And I think the next generation is going to push it way further than we ever could imagine. And I think he's going to be on the front of that. I'm pretty proud of him. Talk to me about the community and the racers and then, you know, how does PFI fit into that and, and the parts you sell? So, so PFI Speed, we build race cars race parts, whether we're fabricating a turbo manifold or header or building our wiring harness or, or machining little, little bits for what we need. We build race cars, we build race parts, we buy race parts. These are all for the racetrack. There's a big difference between the street stuff and the race track itself. The amateur racer is building his little car to go to the track on the weekend to unwind. He works on it during the week, gets everything set up. The car ends up here where we help with the car prep and that kind of thing. Um, PFI gives advice. We read data logs. We help get the tunes worked out. Um, and in turn, we're always solving things together. Yeah, good. So, so look, I, you know, you've talked about the community that you've built here. It's great. We're a big world, right? PRI covers the entire motorsports industry. Where do you fit in there? Um, I think where we fit in is we build race cars. Um, 
you know, we deal with a lot of the companies that are involved with PRI as it is. We're getting young people off the streets and at the track. Uh, PFI as a whole, um, we're always involved with race teams, race cars, um, whether it's road racing, um, we've done some trophy truck stuff, and then our own PSCA race series where it's really an intro um, to a lot of these young guys to get them to the track. Um, and that's why I've, I started it, and that's what I'm pushing towards as PFI as a whole, um, to bring the community that way, somewhere safe. And you are selling race car parts to race cars that go to a racetrack. That's correct. Uh, the stuff we sell is our four race cars. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Um, we're trying to get customers into parts that we know work, um, that'll help them succeed at whatever goal they're after. And, you know, whether it's the quarter mile or, or running around the road course and seeing how fast they can drop their lap times, you know, we're trying to steer them into stuff that's going to help them be successful. In turn, that makes us successful and helps us grow. So that's, that's what we're selling. We're selling that joy. So, so look, you, you know, we're, we're here as SEMA and PRI and, uh, you know, Super this, humbling. well, this, you know, unfortunately this wasn't a scheduled stop, right? Yeah, I mean, right. Uh, you've been in the news the last couple of weeks. Um, everything was running fine at PFI. Yeah. And then, and then describe to me, how you're contacted by the EPA. So for the folks watching this, right, that, that EPA 208 letter is the start of an investigation. Yep. And it's a, it's a rather invasive document that asks a race car shop to provide all sorts of information and can be quite a distraction, quite a disruption, and, and really hurt that shop's business. So I was actually, um... I was with another YouTuber, Amelia Hartford, and I was helping her with one of her little projects. And uh, we were helping her build that. And Jamie, my Jamie here at the shop, calls me up kind of in a little panic or whatever and said, dude, we just got a letter from the EPA stating they want all our information, you know, um, what we're buying, who we're selling to, and uh, who we're buying from, who we're buying from. So like, I was like, well, you know, I didn't believe we did anything wrong. I thought maybe it's just information for whatever reason. I, you know, over the years you go through things and you just kind of, you just roll with it. And I'm not trying to make any waves. So um, I told him I'd look at it when I got back. So we got back, we looked at the paperwork. Um, they had a list of stuff they wanted from us. So we simply started putting it together for them. Um, it took, they wanted it in 30 days. It actually took us two months. We call them for an extension. They were cool with it. Everything seemed okay. Turned everything in. And then um, we got everything in in February and I hadn't heard it. I hadn't heard anything, you know? So I figured that's what it was. They were just kind of wanting to know where parts and what stuff was going where, for whatever reason. And, uh, you know, whatever tracking things this is what, kind of what I thought it was. So I, I wasn't real concerned about it. And then um, yeah, we got hit with a letter stating that I had sold products that were illegal and um, I was being fined 18000 And if I didn't come up with that money in 30 days, it could be as high as 180000 Now, I mean, I, you can still see I'm dumbfounded by it. I, I couldn't even believe it. These are products, you know, the entire industry is used. And, Here's a little guy just doing his thing, and, and I got clobbered with this. And that, I mean, 18,000 is enough to, to really put a dent in everything we do here. It makes really tough to make payroll. Like I said, we don't make a lot here. You know, it's not a huge profit thing. So to get that kind of hit is it's pretty significant. Um, I didn't understand the basis. I didn't, I didn't go in front of any trial or talk to anybody. It was just, he did this, and it's this much whoa but wait a minute don't you want to know what i'm doing here or why what it is um you know there was talks of we got raided we didn't get raided we just simply got these letters and uh yeah it just blindsided me it's still it still dumbfounds me i'm still just overwhelmed by how this happened it uh 
it really sank into me that, you know, I had given my clients information, my vendors information to these guys. And if they're coming for me, who are they coming for next? I was really overwhelmed by that. And uh, the feeling, you know, I might have let somebody else down in some ways. So it's really scary. I'm sorry you're going through yeah, this. Pretty you know, wild. It's uh, truly rough, you know, and you've, you've told your story very well. Do um, you have any idea how the EPA targeted PFI or targeted you? No, I, I assumed it was the uh, social media presence. I assumed that, but I'm not real sure, you know, or, uh, or why, you know. Um, yeah, I don't really know, but it, I, I felt like if they could come for me, they could come for anybody. Because, um, you know, there's, I've even trained a lot of young guys to do what I do, and they're out having their own shops and growing and doing the same types of things. You know, it's, I and mean, that's what we're meant to do on this earth is show what we do, teach, and let people grow. And uh, so I, I worry for all of us. As an industry, if we lay down, we are all done. Something like this, it, you know, I see, I see it taking us all out if we're not careful, you know. We, as an industry, I feel like we need to almost set our own standard of how, guys, what you're selling to people, what we're doing. Like, we, we need to be descriptive, too, and help all the small shops. He's, if you're having a street guy come in, you need to turn him away, man, because that's not what it's about. You know, we, let's flood the tracks. Let's get everybody back. Let's, let's go that direction. Let's grow our, our industry at the track and, and push each other and grow with each other that way. Um, most of these cars, you know, they run for a minute and a half at a time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not a lot. It's a burst of power, and, it's, and then it's a lot of work. I mean, that's a lot of it. So, and we're all a biofuel, you know. Every, every car we work on is a biofuel, whether it's ethanol or whatever, or methanol. We don't, we don't do gas stuff. We haven't done gas stuff for years. Um, there's no power in it. <laughs> Let's be frank, you know what I mean? It's like, it's good for the road. And that's what it's meant for. So, Brent, you get, you get a letter from the EPA. You fill it out. It's, it takes quite a bit of time for you oh, and your yeah. company. And then you get a fine for up to one hundred and eighty thousand yeah. dollars. What what specifically are you being fined for by the EPA? What parts? How many? Walk me through that. So the part that I got fined for is called the Honda S three hundred. This is a it's a little piggyback fuel controller. So when you build a race car, you put bigger injectors in it, more fuel pump, and you need a way to control that control. And then when you're launching, you need a way to help the car launch, control the wheel speed, all of that stuff. Well, Honda makes this S300 board that will solder into an old 92 to 95 Honda ECU. So a lot of the guys get them from junkyards or whatever. Um, we put them in the race cars. We socket these things in there. Uh, the ones that are in question right now as we sold these boards, but these boards go into these ECUs and uh, allows the owner to um, change the pulse width or add or subtract timing via, you know, wheel speed. So if you need more traction, you need to pull some timing, you're able to do so. If you have big injectors and a turbocharger, you can, you know, subtract or add fuel. It also allows you to put a, a wide band O2 sensor so a factory 92 to 5 Honda ECU back in the 90s, they had narrow bands, which is a single wire O2 sensor. Now, these new five wire O2s that come in all these late model cars really give you precision and accurate readings of O2. And that in turn helps you make the car cleaner, faster, and run correctly so it doesn't melt or break or blow up. So what that does is that little control box allows you to change those things to make the car run like you want and help you get successful in what you're doing. And that's what I got dinged for was selling those, those products. And how many? 37. I'm smiling because as I hear your explanation, clearly anybody that knows anything about cars realize that 
you're probably talking about a race car. Yeah, uh, yeah, you are. That's what we're doing. <laughs> okay. All right, Brent, I'm, I'm curious about the offer from the EPA. Either pay us in 30 days or you got 10 times what that, I mean, how does that feel? You can't. Honestly, it all feels like a shakedown to me a little bit. I watched some Sopranos and that's what it felt like, honestly. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. I Give me the details, though. If I pay in 30 days, I pay this and not. So what they came at me with was I can pay 18000 now, pay this fine, sign their little deal that says I won't, I won't sell these products or do this stuff anymore, or, or I'm liable to, for 180000 <laughs> So it's like, it's like, well... If I sign this and do this, then, then I'm safe from this 180,000, which they just dangle over you. Like, I mean, I, I, I can't believe it's a, a situation in itself, honestly. I mean, buying and selling stuff was not, it's not illegal. I don't, so I'm, I've been made to feel pretty guilty about it, you know, or like I did something wrong, but that's what I'm trying, I, a lot of confusion, because I'm trying to find out what, what it is I did, what it is I'm doing that's not correct. I, I do, I feel blindsided by the whole thing. It, uh, it's really disrupted how we've done business altogether. Um, it's made me rethink a lot of things, you know. Um, yeah, so, you know, so recently the EPA has been in increasing their enforcement of the Clean Air Act. Yep. SEMA has been working for years to pass the RPM Act. What's your interpretation of the RPM Act and how that's going to protect you? Um, from my understanding is it's basically going to give us our rule book. Um, it's going to say we can turn our street cars into race cars and do with them as we see fit at the track. Um, and that the EPA will understand that's what we're doing and in turn Kind of get off our backs. Let us do what we do. You guys go after what you see fit. And I, you know, I have no problem with them, you know, pushing clean air and everything else because it's, it's a problem we're all facing. We're all working on it. I think the RPM Act um, will help us all grow and thrive and uh, really bring everybody, the family, our friends, all the stuff we, we're continuing to try to do together um, that we can turn these um, on-road vehicles to race cars. We can have our, our, our time at the track and enjoy our family and friends and, and all the ripping we like to do and, and just have a good time. I mean, that's, that's really what it is about. It's bringing community together and uh, sharing our, our fa failures and successes and uh, trying to grow with one another and make the whole thing better. There's a lot of shops like PFI. Tons. There's a lot of racers who love this industry. Yeah, for sure. Tell me what you're taught, your community, your YouTube channel, what are you telling other shop owners right now? I'm telling them right now, I'm telling them they need, to, they need to be careful. They need to change the way they're doing business. All of us need to make sure you're very clear when, what you're selling to and what you're doing. You know, um, I mean, before I, I sell a product like that, I, I'm wanting pictures. I'm wanting to know previously, so I don't have to chase them after the fact um, before I sell this product. Are you building a race car? So it's, you know, it's a little more work, but I th in the long run, we have to protect ourselves and what we're doing because um, we love this. We want it to thrive. We want it to grow. We want success with, with everyone we know. We want success for the client. If they're going to be on road and it's street stuff, then, you know, we can't help you. I mean, that's just, that's just how it's got to be. Talk about, um, I think it's probably your newfound appreciation for the work at SEMA and PRI. Oh, you guys, you guys are awesome. I mean, I, when I made that video, I, I, I honestly, I cried for some help. And uh, here you guys are. So it's, it's pretty humbling. And, it, and I'm thankful for the reach we had to be able to stir everybody up to that point, you know, to where um, you guys are. You guys are in the trenches in Washington. A lot of us, we don't understand that side of the world. You know, we're, it's day to day, 
make sure this is done, this is done, you know. And to have folks working in the background to keep what we do secure is, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's so important for PRI and SEMA. It's, you guys got your own chore. It's, it's a big one. And that's why I think as little shops in the car community, we have to come together behind you. We have to stand with you. We have to all do this together or else it's not going to work. It, it, it's going to take the collective at this point, I believe. We're going to have a lot of people that watch your story. Individuals, maybe they own a shop like this. Maybe they just own a race yeah. car. Yeah. You know, SEMA has a website called SaveOurRaceCars.com. You get on these websites, you sign the RPM Act, first and foremost, that is what you do. And then you continue to spread the word, whether you're in your churches, your family functions, your group, your grandmas, you kid everybody involved that loves to go to car shows, loves to go to race events, that loves to see these cars come out every now and then. Everybody needs to get involved. Save the race cars is a real thing, because if not, they're, they're going to go away. We don't, if we don't set some kind of real standards and ways of doing business, then this all is, it's done. And I see it really clearly, kind of slap me in the face, but it's, uh, it's here. So we all just need to kind of band together, and get the arms locked, interlocked and, and march on this and get, it, get things going now. This is not a later, this isn't just sign the thing and that's it. You sign it and then you get active posting on your social medias, getting in front of everyone's face all the time. You know, we don't gotta use all the harsh stuff. We can be positive about this and, and adult and really make some change. And then now's the time. Who knew we'd have to make change in the race car community, but we do. You know, we've, we've all done this for so long, but now's the time. So Brent, uh, I wanna read you a quote here. I wanna get your reaction, you know, in a, in a recent news article and legal briefs, the EPA has been inconsistent in stating whether it will go after parts sales for racing use only. And sometimes they say they will not. Other, others, like in recent legal proceedings, they say, and here's the quote, uh, quote, an EPA certified motor vehicle cannot become a non-road vehicle even if it is used exclusively for competition because the definition of motor vehicle hinges on the purpose of its design and not its use, end quote. Now, knowing what you've just gone through, can the industry trust the EPA right now? I mean, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. And I mean, that flat out sounds like just trying to put us out of business. I mean, I mean we currently, convert on-road cars to, to race cars. And, you know, it doesn't matter from what generation, but that, that is what we're doing. Um, and that quote, you know, it doesn't give me a lot of faith that, that they're, they're looking out for us in any way or even wanting to work with us. So I think it's, yeah, again, it comes back to the RPM Act. I mean, that's, that's step one. We need to get that push through now more than ever. If everyone doesn't come together and we don't get behind it, people that think like that are, are gonna squash it. And you didn't vote for them, you didn't ask them to, to get hired, you had no say in it. But these individuals are controlling an entire industry or they're, they're pro pushing their, their power onto it, an entire industry. And uh, it's time for us to push back. It really is time to push back. I mean, no, no single entity or person should be given that much power. It's, uh, I think power corrupts in those ways, and this is, uh, this is borderline on that. It's getting on the corrupt side of things, and this is not right. I, I mean, it, literally, it'll put me out of business tomorrow if that, was, that quote is how it is. I'm, it, I, I'd be done. Right, so we've, we've got the story race shop, selling race parts to race cars. There's an EPA fine for this activity. Um, but you've, uh, you've documented a number of these parts have gone yep. to race cars. Yep. And we've got a couple of them here today 
and we're going to go look at the parts to the actual customers that you've sold these parts to. Yep. All right, well, let's, let's, go. let's go take a look. Let's, let's check it out. All right. Let me let's show go. you one let's, of these hot rods. Let's take a look. All right, this is this is one of our This is one of your clients. customers, yeah. yeah. So This is Jerry's car. It uh, It's an older Accord, but you can clearly see there's no VIN anymore. This thing is super raced out, roll cage, custom suspension. Yeah, it, yeah it, hits, it hits you immediately. This is immediately. a race car, right? Yeah. I mean, and even for folks that that don't build race cars, yeah. I mean, point something. I mean, we've got slicks on we the got, front. We've got Lexan. We've got the fuel cell on the front intercooler stuff. The engine and trannies he's working on, obviously. Yeah. It's a car that's under development, but uh, yeah, but you can see it's clearly a race car. He had uh, the Honda data. So we got a parachute on the back. Yeah, well, I'm looking to slow look, it down. And we're gonna look through the interior. We got, yeah. no, there's no- Lexan windows, Lexan, they're all plastic. There's a roll bar, there's, there's no stitch of interior left. Nope, all the sheet metal's done to lighten it up. And then, like right in here, you'll see, so this is the Han data board right in here. These are the units we sold. But you can see where that is, and uh, that'll control the, the prelude engine that, that mounts Don't in this thing. So, yep. so let's just, again, this is one of the cars. This is one of them. That's right. the Han data piece. Yep. That, this is why you've been fined by the EPA. Yep, this is exactly, this is exactly why, and we use, we, use this tuning solution because they really work well with this style car. I mean, it really does everything we need it to do. It's great for um, an amateur racer to tune on themselves and, and get their car set up while they're at the track. Super user friendly. Clearly a race car and, and even for, for other shops that make Honda, but don't make Hondas, but make Mustangs and make Corvettes and other yeah. type, I mean, this is a race car just like every other shop in just, the United States. Yep, exactly. You know. Sure is. Yep. Okay, and we got a couple more, right? Yep, There's... we got a couple more. We've got a rally car. Yeah. It's a good friend of mine, Brett Hunter. Okay. So we can check that out. Yeah, let's take a look at some of those. All right, so, so here's another one of the cars that we yeah. sold the box to. Uh, this is Brett Hunter's. Um, rally car, and you can clearly see this is yeah, it's roll cage all the way through it. I yeah. see it immediately. And R roll cage, air air filtrate, air filtration systems. Um, the Honda is located over there, and just gauges. This thing's all purpose built yeah. for for rally racing, and uh, I mean that's this is what we're doing. Yeah, clearly a race car. You sold yeah. a race car part to a race car and. Here's one of the actual 37 cases right here. Yep. So. Yep. That's two of them. Yeah. That's two of the hot rods that we've that were accused of whatever. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you have more. You're putting your information together. Yep. Yep. We're working nonstop to get all the information together. So, you know, we clearly have a case that says, "Hey, this is what everyone's doing." Yeah. You know, we're no one's trying to run around on the roads and and whatnot. We're we're building race cars and we're trying to accomplish our own goals. Okay, well, it's a great story. It's a tragic story that we got to talk about it, but uh, you know, this is uh, this is the overreach that we're seeing from the yeah. EPA. So. Absolutely, and there was nobody that was came out and looked at the cars we were doing or anything else. So, so like I said, we're doing that groundwork. We're trying to get it all set up and see if we can't push through this case, and then we'll keep pushing and try to help others not get into this situation. So, okay, good. Hey folks, thanks for watching. Uh, tough story coming out of PFI Speed that's really impacting this little speed shop. These guys just want to build race car parts and go racing. Uh, EPA though is standing in their way. So look, let's get involved. Uh, get on saveourracecars.com. 
send a letter to your representative. Let's get involved right now.